Welcome. So in the last session, we finished about uh, the kingdom Munira. So in this session, I'm going to discuss about the next kingdom, kingdom Pratista. Okay, so this uh, kingdom Pratista, uh, right, uh, it includes, it includes uh, all those unicellular eukaryotic organisms so in monira it includes a unicellular prokaryotic so here only unicellular there is no uh, group of organisms included under this protista which are multicellular okay so no multicellular only unicellular eukaryotic organisms are included under this kingdom protista then right so here some members have cell wall so some members will be having cell walls and in others it's just cell membrane so that is only a uh, plasma membrane uh, will be present of course in there are some exceptions we will see in case of euglenoids uh, instead of cell wall they will have a pelito so that is okay in addition to cell membrane so that i'll discuss uh, when i uh, talk about those eglinoids so here some members have cell wall okay not all of them will have cell wall okay and these are okay primarily so these are okay so primarily aquatic organisms means they live in okay waters so they live in water so they are primarily aquatic organisms and some have cilia and flagella which will help uh, for them to uh, move that is they show locomotion here right and protists they reproduce so reproduce both they reproduce both by asexual and sexual methods so asexual and sexual methods are also seen in this now this kingdom protista it is divided uh, into or it includes okay uh, five different uh, groups so they are okay so five groups of protista so they include one chrysophytes okay the next group uh, the dinoflagellates dinoflagellates then euglenoids and then slime mounts slime mounts and lastly the protozoans okay so these are uh, the five groups of protista the chrysophytes dinoflagellates euglenoids slime mouths and uh, protozoans okay so earlier we thought slime mouths are fungi and we included under it but later they have been okay separated and even earlier these uh, euglenoids we used to study under protozoans but uh, that also we have uh, separated them okay and these protozoans we believe are the ancestors for animals so the kingdom animalia have evolved from this group of uh, protozoans that we'll see uh, in our coming sessions okay so now we'll discuss uh, each of these groups the trisophytes dinoflagellates okay euglenoids and all these one by one Right, so first uh, group we'll see about chrysophytes. So the first group of okay uh, these uh, protista chrysophytes. So here this uh, group includes so it includes diatoms and decimates. So it includes diatoms and decimates. So these uh, decimates are actually called golden algae. So 
so they are called golden algae so here golden algae is due to presence of uh, a gold golden or gold color pigment so this is golden algae so it is due to presence of a okay gold color pigment so gold color pigment and it's called the fucoxanthin so gold color pigment fucoxanthin so because of presence of that gold color pigment okay so they appear a uh, gold in color so they are commonly called golden algae of course they are not algae right uh, uh, even though they perform the process of photosynthesis so earlier uh, we have included okay some of them under this algae thinking that they are plants okay of course they are plant like but later we have uh, separated them and included under this uh, uh, group uh, protistaria okay then they so where do we see these kinds of piles they are found so they are found in okay aquatic systems we know and these will include the fresh waters so that is rivers okay lakes and all then even in marine waters also we see them and also in moist soils so we see growing them in fresh waters the marine waters and also in moist soils we find them then so coming to these diatoms so these diatoms are chief producers so these diatoms are okay chief producers in the oceans so they are chief producers in the ocean means they are main okay producers we know uh, in the aquatic uh, uh, ecosystems right it's the producers who actually perform photosynthesis they release oxygen and the oxygen uh, will get dissolved in the water and it becomes dissolved oxygen and it will get uh, used by all those aquatic organisms and uh, they also will serve as a food uh, to the next uh, tropic levels right so that's why we say the diatoms are chief producers in uh, oceans okay so many other organisms that is heterotropic organisms they depend on this either directly or indirectly then okay so these are okay planktonic uh, organisms so these are all okay so all are planktonic organisms so what we mean by this uh, planktonic organisms so planktonic organisms are okay microscopic so these are microscopic okay then passively floating so they don't have any uh, locomotory structures they don't have cilia and flagella okay for the purpose of uh, locomotion so hence they will simply uh, move along with the water currents so all those microscopic passively floating so that is they move along with the water currents here so right uh, so microscopic passively floating uh, organisms right in the water currents microscopic passively floating in the water currents are called uh, all of them as uh, planktonic organisms right then most of them are photosynthetic so most of them are photosynthetic means uh, they perform the process of uh, photosynthesis and uh, coming to diatoms in case of diatoms in diatoms the body is covered by okay two shells 
and these cells are composed of uh, a substance that is called silica. So in diatoms, the body is covered by two shells and uh, those shells sit like uh, okay just like how we see in case of a soap box so we can see here okay so two shells and inside this is the organism so inside this will be the organism so this is the lower shell okay uh, right and uh, this is called hypotheca and this one is the upper shell and this is called epitheca it's called epitheca and inside this is the organism and it is protected by these two uh, shells that is upper and lower uh, shells and these uh, shells are made up of okay so the shells are made up of a substance called silica so they are made up of a substance called silica so uh, because uh, they are uh, the shells are made up of this silica uh, these shells are indestructible so they cannot be uh, destroyed and hence uh, they can be stored for a very very long time so there is a very tiny okay uh, microscopic uh, uh, organism that is diatoms and what happens when usually we see them uh, growing okay near the surface of the water so we'll see them growing okay near the surface of the water and here uh, is the ocean's bottom okay so this is uh, oceans okay surface right and this is the ocean bed right so here uh, the organisms will be living near to the surface of the water okay uh, right or on the surface of the water and they will be floating of course along with this uh, okay uh, water currents uh, this okay so these are the organisms which are present here now once they die okay the organism inside will get decomposed and shells will finally come and okay settle on the ocean bed so here this over millions and millions of years what happened a lot of uh, shells they got deposited on the ocean bed and okay so they all together mixed with the you know uh, the sand silt whatever that is present on the ocean bed together it resulted in the formation of diatomaceous earth so it resulted in the formation of okay diatomaceous earth so it resulted in the formation of this diatomaceous earth okay so uh, you can also call simply with the uh, okay uh, diatomite right so diatomaceous earth or simply called diatomite so this diatomaceous uh, earth is gritty so means uh, consisting of grit so it is uh, rough okay and hence it is uh, used in uh, different uh, you know uh, works like uh, polishing filtration of oils and syrups etc so this diatomaceous earth okay or diatomite is used in filtration of oils and syrups okay uh, right and can also be 
uh, used in the process of uh, polishing etc and so on. okay so that's uh, in case of uh, the dye atoms okay so who right uh, whose shells finally uh, uh, fall on the ocean bed and in over millions and millions of years resulted in the formation of this dye atomaceous earth okay so that's a few characters of these uh, chrysophytes one example uh, here i would like to give is the dinobryon dinobryon divergence so dinobryon divergence okay is an example of this group called uh, chrysophytes okay uh, next we will see uh, the next group that is dino uh, flagellates so the next group is dino flagellates so coming to this group uh, these are okay mostly marine means most or majority of them live in marine water some there may be exception living in fresh waters also and they are photosynthetic mostly marine and photosynthetic marine and photosynthetic and uh, they appear in yellow coloration so they appear in yellow okay green brown okay uh, red in colors okay so they appear in any of these colors so etc so in uh, this is all because of uh, the different pigments present in them so they appear in yellow green okay uh, right uh, brown red or one more i'll add okay and uh, blue also so colors in blue colors so this is all due to presence of okay different combination of photosynthetic pigments combination of different photosynthetic okay pigments okay so xanthophylls which give yellow color okay uh, right and then like fucal xanthin we have seen uh, they may give golden color and these when present together uh, can give a different coloration so the green color the chlorophyll uh, molecules so here like this uh, the chlorophyll molecules the xanthophylls their uh, concentration can also combination and concentration can give uh, different color so that is what here also it resulted in so some of them yellows uh, some they appear in green so it means here the chlorophyll is the majority out of all other pigments okay and the different com uh, combination may give the brown red and blue colorations right so that is uh, uh, the different colors uh, they appear okay in case of dinoflagellates then coming to the cell wall so here the dinoflagellates have cell wall and this cell wall have okay the cell wall has stiff cellulose plates so they have stiff cellulose plates okay so there while i was discussing uh, the overall five kingdom classification so there i did not mention in case of protista what the cell wall is composed of okay so here now you can see the cell wall uh, is composed of this uh, stiff cellulose plates okay on the outer surface so it has stiff cellulose plates on 
outer surface okay so here uh, when we see okay so the group may appear so these are okay uh, cellulose plates so you may see okay so the cellulose plates like this and they have actually groups okay so they have a group so all these are cellulose plates okay so they uh, it is seen uh, somewhat in this way okay of course okay uh, then i will mention one more okay and these uh, di okay dinoflagellates will have actually two flagella right so most of them have two flagella so here uh, i'll discuss that two flagella so here all these are stiff cellulose plates so those are all stiff cellulose plates and i told most of them have two flagella so one flagella is present okay longitudinally so you may see one flagella is present okay longitudinally okay and another one you may see present horizontally okay so that so this is a transverse flagellum it's transverse flagellum and this one in an another group is called the longitudinal flagellum so transverse flagellum or longitudinal flagellum okay so this uh, we can also call it the annular flagellum called annular flagellum whereas this one is called sulcal flagellum is called sulcal flagellum so uh, this is how we see in case of a dinoflagellate that is covered by stiff cellulose plates and presence of uh, okay two uh, flagella right and here uh, the red dinoflagellates they undergo actually so uh, different groups we see and coming to the red dinoflagellates we know they appear in different so green dinoflagellates we call them brown dinoflagellates yellow and here we'll see about the red dinoflagellates so they undergo rapid multiplication undergo rapid multiplication uh, okay so and this of course multiplication which means a, a form of uh, asexual reproduction okay where it results in uh, formation of more number of dinoflagellates in a very uh, short period of time and uh, okay this results in formation of red tiles so this okay rapid growth of this red dinoflagellates it results in formation of red tides they cause red tides okay the tides to appear red in color so we call red tides okay so this uh, in case of okay uh, one example of course in case here gony logs so it is an organism uh, that is a red dinoflagellate that is responsible for this uh, 
red tides uh, formation of it in seas then so these uh, especially these bunny locks and so they will be producing a certain kind of uh, toxic substances okay so they produce certain kind of toxic substances and these toxic substances can kill uh, many marine organisms including uh, fishes right uh, so that's about a few characters of dinoflagellates so we'll see some examples like uh, seracium so seracium is a dinoflagellate then okay uh, noctiluca is an another example so here uh, one speciality of uh, noctiluca it is luminescent uh, means uh, okay it produces a light it's a luminescent okay so etc okay uh, i mean i have given uh, two examples under these dinoflagellates okay so the next one the next group uh, of these protestants include euglenoids So the next one includes euglenoids. So all those uh, euglena like. So euglenoids means uh, euglena like. So all those euglena like uh, uh, protestants have been included under this group. Okay. So these are mostly freshwater. So these are mostly freshwater. Okay and present in stagnant waters fresh water and present in stagnant waters means the waters which do not show okay any movement so in case of uh, uh, rivers so river is not a stagnant water it shows flowing waters so they don't live in flowing waters they live only in okay fresh waters that are stagnant means so that includes the ponds, okay, lakes, etc. So in them uh, where the water movement is not seen, so there we find growing of these protestants uh, called euglenoids. And here the body is covered by body is covered by pedicle. So the body is covered by pedicle. So pedicle is outer to the plasma membrane. So they have plasma membrane. Okay, so here. We'll see an example for this that is a euglena okay so here it will have actually two flagella so it will be having okay two flagella so one long and short uh, flagella will be present so here I'll just draw the outer one is uh, the pedicle, whereas the inner one is the cell membrane. So this outer one is pedicle and the inner one is cell membrane. Okay, so many things that actually uh, instead of cell membrane only pedicle is present. Okay, it is not the case. So in addition to cell membrane, so we know cell wall is present, but instead of cell wall, uh, where we see in other groups, here we have, okay, uh, the pedicle. And so this is uh, the nucleus, okay, and it will have, uh, as I told, two flagella, one it will be, okay, the long flagella, and another one is the short flagella. Okay, so this is uh, long flagellum and this is short flagellum 
So because of presence of uh, flagellum, so uh, the organism is capable of showing okay the movement. I mean it shows locomotion. So this is okay nucleus, and here the presence of pellicle okay uh, gives a flexibility. Okay, so it gets a uh, flexibility due to presence of it. Okay, and right. So the next one, uh, these uh, you know euglenoids they exhibit uh, a more of a nutrition. So what we call it a uh, mixotropic uh, mode of nutrition. Okay, so euglenoids exhibit mixotropic type of nutrition so what we mean by this mixotropic uh, type of nutrition uh, the these euglenoids in the presence of light okay so in presence of light they are autotropic they are autotropic and in absence of light they are heterotropic so in the presence of light they are autotropic and in the absence of uh, okay light they are heterotropic so when an organism shows both autotropic and heterotropic mode of nutrition then we need to call such a mode of nutrition as mixotropic nutrition okay right so i think with this we have understood that the kingdom protista includes all those organisms uh, whom we were not able to keep under animals or under plants or under uh, the fungi right and definitely we know they have a nucleus means they are okay eukaryotes not prokaryotes so hence we cannot include them under uh, prokaryotes also for that reason they have okay uh, created uh, the kingdom protista and included all those organisms whom we cannot uh, define them properly okay so that is uh, the mixotropic mode of nutrition right example is euglena right so with this uh, i will end today's session so in the next session we will see the remaining groups of uh, kingdom uh, protista